Everybody really is quiet. <laughs> I don't know what the, I don't know if everybody's tired or what. <laughs> yep. Uh, I just got an email from Karen. Should I read it to you? Yeah, I, yeah, that would be good. The Unless you, that, what she had on Facebook, which is the same thing, I'm sure. You already, you already saw it on Facebook. But not, not everybody. Does. I didn't. I didn't. I, I mean, she just put it on there. I talked to her today, but I'd like to hear it. Today has by far been the worst day we've had. I had to have help for my brother-in-law to even get him up from the bed to his chair. He slept all day except for about an hour when he was hollering. The nurse came and checked him out. His vitals were good, but he has a rattle in his chest. She said he could have aspirated on something he drank. He's had a hard time swallowing liquids. He's had two bites of cinnamon roll, and that's all the food he's had. He's had two doses of morphine for pain, and that seemed to help. I think I'm going to leave him in the chair and not try to get him in bed. I don't think he'll be able to stand and move. Please keep us in your chair. This has been a most difficult day. Hmm. Now, that's really, really sad. Yeah. Um, continue to remember Patrick and Karen. Um, hard for him, but equally difficult. Um, and do we have any other prayer concerns? I went to see Lillian this afternoon, um, and she was doing much better today. Um, I oh, went yesterday okay. morning, and it was very hard for her to talk just from an energy standpoint. She didn't have energy. But we talked for about an hour this afternoon, so she was feeling much better, and um, all of her vitals continue to improve. And and Lynn, her niece, said that they were going to keep her and, and maybe reevaluate on Friday as to whether they think they could discharge her from the hospital. Um, okay. now, I don't think they know exactly yet whether she'll go home or whether um, you know what what the next step is. I mean, she'll certainly need probably around the clock care for a while, if, if not going forward. But, um, but from yesterday to today, she had made so much improvement and, and just seemed to feel so much better and her complexion was better and um, good. seemed to have a lot more energy. So it, it was good. Awesome. Good. Very good. Thank I you. will say, um, if you haven't yet, one thing I'm sure she would appreciate, her niece is staying at her house so if you want to send her a card, you can just send it to her house and her niece will take it with her to the hospital. She had several cards in her windowsill this afternoon and she mentioned each of them. So I know that would mean a lot to her. Um, and then Al Francisco fell yesterday. Um, they moved him into a new one of the apartments at Commonwealth and I got a call from Sherry B at about 5.30 last night and he had fell and hit his head. And they ended up having to take him to VCU in Richmond um, because some blood was released on his brain. But things improved pretty drastically overnight and um, he's already back at Commonwealth. I just talked to Sherry. So um, they're good. really encouraged about that. Good. Very good. Have you been feeling, Susan? You still feeling better? Uh, uh feel better. I feel much better. Um, I am still kind of weak, uh, eating very much, but I feel a lot better. Good. Um, so I'm leave Emily and I are leaving tomorrow morning at 430 to go to Kansas City for a wedding. Wow. So I get back in one piece and don't get sick while I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> can't deal with that okay oh susan i got one more sure prayer request um i found out this afternoon donna's brother dale has a mass on his brain um, oh. Oh. And they, they don't know you... they don't oh. know yet whether it's malignant or benign that he's supposed to see his oncologist in lynchburg on friday um but apparently he had been having some headaches, Donna said, since December or so and just had not mentioned it um, and ended up going to the doctor, I think this week, and they did a CT scan. Um, 
and Donna said it was like a mass on the frontal lobe of his one of his frontal lobes and that that they don't know that he had um uh prostate cancer maybe 10 years or so ago and that they told him you know back then that there was a chance it would metastasize later and spread um so they're just on edge um and donna especially i think it's just been really hard for her and um just doesn't really know what to feel or how to feel yeah Um, she's she's in raleigh with elliot because ann frazier had her baby yesterday because i knew she was supposed to um, yeah, and she said that, that um, Ann Frazier was doing fine, that they thought she'd come home tomorrow with the baby. Um, his name is Clark David, I believe. And he was like uh-huh. eight pounds and six ounces. It was a big baby. Wow. Yeah, big baby. So, um, but she was in charge of watching Elliot uh, today, her and Meredith. So. Mm. Um, yeah, and and they Pam's- had three sons, you know, himself. Yeah. Mm. Was that Pam- for me, excuse me, but his having the cancer, but everybody felt so good. It's been such a long time. We yeah. thought he'd escaped. Yeah. Runs, but that's bad. And they don't know. I mean, they don't know that it's cancerous yet. They, yeah. they haven't determined that. But yes. he okay. should know maybe Friday, hopefully. Hope and pray. Um, and also, Pam Smith's sister's had a baby on Friday and they knew the baby was going to have some problems um, and the baby died on. Mm. So um, just think about them. Um, that's, gosh, I can't even think of Pam's. Am I freezing up again tonight? You, you froze after Pam. Oh, okay. Um, so, so you didn't hear, y'all didn't hear what? Well, we heard about the, um, her, her sister's grandchild. Right. Um, yeah. I think you were trying to say the sister's name, maybe. I can't remember her name. I um, can't remember either. Is it Wanda? Yes. Yeah, Wanda. That's, that's right. That sounds right. And she grew up in South Boston too, but yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, um, and Pam was by this morning and she actually was telling me hard time believe it or not finding a casket for an infant mm. so she had to find powells and they were gonna get it to richmond somehow i, I don't i don't know it was it was really strange mm. um so do we have any more prayer concerns oh joy burnett's brother-in-law um his name is ed I can't remember his last name. He's in Auburn, Alabama. Um, but anyway, he has liver cancer and he's been having some very severe back pain. So they're scared that maybe the cancer has spread. And I think he's supposed to have a scan maybe tomorrow. And they were going down there for a graduation or a wedding, I believe, Joy and Jerry. Um, but she's really concerned about him and, yeah. and about her sister. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, well let's um let's go to God in prayer and before we Almighty God, there are so many um terrible things that people are having to deal with that um we are aware of. Um but we ask that you be with each of you mentioned tonight. We ask for healing where um if it be in your will, we ask for healing. Yes, dear God, more than anything that your presence and your love and your peace and your hope would be with, with those who are dealing with difficult times, with those who are um, having to be. Also, we ask for strength for them because we know what a, what a difficult time that is as well. Help us, dear God, to be the salt and light in this world showing your love to others that we meet each and every day and go with us now as we have this um, and as we talk more and um, discuss more about your word and what you have I said amen (laughs) 
I said, I said, amen. And I looked and everybody's head's still down. I went, uh-oh, well. We yeah, missed I, the last so couple sorry. of lines. The That's last right. couple of sentences we missed. I, so sorry. I, and I don't know what to do about this at all. I'm not even, it was my laptop that was the problem. And I'm not even using that tonight. So, okay. So let's take a look at chapter four um it of the book um open-hearted love is the chapter title um let me just um let me just kind of summarize um the chapter or give some high point highlights of it um so um tom berlin starts off this chapter by talking about going to cedar hill which is the home of um a famous civil war era abolitionist his name was Douglas um, and it prompted Tom Berlin his visit there it prompted him to agitate um, so which which um, Frederick Douglas used to describe his work um, and it can mean to confront and to challenge or it can also mean um, like and remember the um, the example that he gave of that washing machine agitator. Yeah. Sorry about that. That was my mother calling. Um, he gave the example of the washing machine agitator and how it, it works to clean the clothes. Two meanings of the word agitate. Um, and then um, he, Tom Berlin, led his disciples on a journey um, that was meant to agitate them, um, not necessarily to get them all stirred up really, but when he traveled through Samaria and, and they, most people at that time would not have traveled through Samaria. It, it was, but why is it that most people would not have traveled through Samaria? They didn't want to interact with those people. Yeah, exactly. They would go around. They would um, make it inconvenient by going around Samaria so they wouldn't have to interact with, with those people. Um, and so directly through Samaria, taking his disciples with them just because he wanted um, to um, confront their own beliefs and, and their own biases about um, he also talks about, um, in the, in this chapter about their own village in Samaria, um, a place, uh, I'm talking about us, a place not want Jesus to call us to go because of our own biases and our own bigotry, even the places, um, in our city, in our country, in our world that you would area places that you would not want to go through um because you wouldn't want to have to deal with the people can you think of any how many of you drive down college street nobody right i do because that's where francis lives do what is that where, where Francis lives, really? Where Francis lives. I know that. Did not know that. Um, but so you'll drive down College Street. <laughs> um, I, I, I remember. I do occasionally. Yeah. I, I, I have never. I'm sorry, Dwight. I said I've delivered furniture several houses on College. Okay. Okay. I've I literally have never been on College <laughs> Street. First Baptist, um, rising I, above. That's right. Um, goes to College Street, Susan. <laughs> I'm sorry. I you were breaking Every, up, Barbara. Everybody but you goes down College Street. Too. Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> so, um, I remember um, back in the fall, I guess sometime I was coming, um, and right about that store area there, oh, yeah. uh, across the road. <laughs> shooting back at somebody at the store, but literally ran across the road in front of my car, scared out of me. Um, and so, and I remember telling people, 
What did you say? You were coming from a funeral. I was. It was Steve Sam's funeral. Um, but I remember telling people that story, and several people said to me, oh, I never go down that way. If I have to go out the other way. And that just blew my mind. So for a good while, I didn't either. I just tried to take a different route. Side of that was stupid. So, But are there any other places that you would identify as a area that you would not might want to go through? West Side. Because you would. Okay. Okay. But I think West. West Side. Do what? I said, but I've been there. Uh, yeah, okay. But I didn't like it. I usually got my piece with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. It's lovely. <laughs> when In I was this growing up, my mother, my mother wouldn't let me go to Riverdale when I was growing up. Vivian Anderson, <laughs> Viv many times that her mother never would let her go to Riverdale because good girls did not go to Riverdale. That's right. My mother wouldn't even. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we used to call it Reeferdale. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And I couldn't go to Bloodfield. Y'all know Bloodfield? Well, Bloodfield. I don't know what that is. That's when you go down Webster Street, but just uh, yeah, keep yeah. on going there. So. Okay. We couldn't go to that. The name tells you what's going on down there. How yeah. about even um, in other places in the world, what would you um, think might be um, Samaria that um, that you go through? Certainly would not want to go through North Korea. Um, and, there, and there are other. Um, Okay, so Tom Berlin talks about an incident from a mission trip to Mexico that, that challenged um, a stereotype about Mexican. Ever been a time in your life when your ideas about a group of people, like you may have thought one thing about a group of people based on their um, their race, um, their religion, or whatever. Um, but has it ever been? Have you have you ever encountered a group of people that your stereotype about them was challenged? I can I can relate one story that was just told to me recently, and it's my Bible. And he he said to me that um, he said, you know, I know I prejudiced person, I always have been. And he said, but look where I grew up. And I said, that's not an excuse. It's been that way. But he said, um, over the past year or two, he's been going down to Newburn, North Carolina, to homes that have been destroyed by flooding and he said and my whole about people have changed um so he said so i mean that's that's uh, where his stereotype um uh, of black people changed was challenged have, you know of any others has yours ever been challenged Okay. All right. So Tom Berlin writes, throughout my lifetime, America has been a place of tension and conflict over issues of race and racial injustice. Um, let's see. Um, so would you say that in your lifetime that racial conflict has gotten better or worse in America? 
Oh, worse. Worse. The conflict's probably gotten worse, but the treatment's probably gotten some better. Okay. Uh -oh. Okay. Because a generation it, it, or two ago, they didn't have any idea of improving what, what was. And there is some movement toward improvement. Okay. All right. Anybody else? That? Or even the same thought? And there, there's more press coverage, be it TV or internet or whatever. So I tend to think there's more, but maybe it's equal and we just know more about the cases that are out there. But it's amazing to me. It's just eye opening how many incidents of racial injustice are out there and on display on the nightly news three and four nights a week. Yeah, yeah. Um, Garrett and I had a little little conversation about that this morning and that, you know, I, I don't think any want any of us want to um, or that um, we animosity towards people of other races um, and that we would always say that you know God loves all people no matter what the color of their skin and then Garrett made a good say that but do we live that do so do our actions mimic our words because it's very easy to say yes God loves all people and I love all people um, because God children but do my actions speak to that as well and, and you know and i have to admit sometimes they don't yes yeah, and i went to a retreat um last week and, and one of the is for other pastors and one of the pastors is a, a black lady and she lives in um roanoke rapids north carolina um mm -hmm. but she was a, a in the army you know, so it's a second career for her. So she's retired from the army, um, but her son's a Marine and has been a Marine for like 22 years um, and has been deployed, I think she said five times and, and was about to be deployed again. But anyway, um, recently he lives in California and he went to get uh, something like, he went to like a Verizon store or something. And anyway, something happened and this lady pulled a knife on him outside of the store and wow. he, and like charged at him and he you know disarmed her and like actually got the knife from her and he drives a truck so he threw her knife in the back of his truck where she couldn't get to it um but then when the police came you know i mean and trying to like i think the lady went in the store or something like that he was the person that got handcuffed um mm -hmm. and you know just to like I think stuff like that happens yeah. fairly regularly. And like, you know, I mean, I, I've never had a similar experience, but also like, I mean, just, you know, like he was the one that was attacked and like he protected himself and didn't do any harm to the lady, you know, and was really trying to protect her too. Um, but then he ended up, you know, when, when somehow he ended up in handcuffs and then I think they resolved the issue, but it was just such a, but you know, and like she, <laughs> this lady's in her 60s, I guess. Um, and she just went through these stories about like how often that had happened to like members of her immediate family, um, whether it's her sons or her grands, you know, or, or really her, her daughter too. I think it had some, you know, it's just a, I think it's such a different world. And, um, you know, I, I think sometimes we're so isolated from what life is like for other people and, and the experience they have is just so radically different than ours. And because we, we don't have a lot of like cross connections. I mean, like that was like an eye opening thing to me to hear mm -hmm. her tell that story and like the impact that it had on her and like what it, I mean, like she was really struggling with it because she was just very concerned for her son and then for her grandsons and, and even for herself, really. Like the things mm -hmm. that she had to worry about, um, like I had never had those concerns and I, like yeah. I doubt my parents right. had either. Um, right. You know, and it's just, a, it's a, I think it's a whole different world out there than, than we, we recognize sometimes. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, I don't think, like, I mean, and she didn't think, I mean, you know, I don't think those police officers, like, I don't think they meant, 
you know, I don't think they, like, I think, like, I don't think they were, I, you know, I don't know, like, it's just this disconnect between what we, like, like what you were saying, what we say we believe, but then how we act and how we don't always recognize that our actions, you know, don't line up with what we say we believe and, and how, like what impact that actually has. Like, what does that mean in practice? Mm -hmm. um, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. The president of the of uh, University of Richmond, where I went to school, was black, and I guess it's the first black one they've had. But anyway, um, in one of the speeches, he was referring to stuff like y'all are saying. But he said that all of them, no matter their station in life, as dads, they have the talk with their sons about act differently, mm -hmm. you know, be sure you're not doing anything kind of thing to, because it's going to happen to you. She, he said, we just all have the talk with our boys. I, I have I heard that's that. kind of sad. It is. I've heard that from um, Black, they, you know, have to have that talk with their sons, particularly every time they walk out of the house, mm -hmm. um, you know. And, and I, I, I was thinking um, the, the Sunday morning that Emily was taking me and she got pulled for speeding in Roxborough and, um, and she got a ticket for speeding. And even though the guy knew where I was going, it didn't matter. But anyway, that's beside the point. But on the way up the road after that, I said, you know, we're just mad over, but we weren't afraid. And I can't imagine what it's like for other people, um, other races, when they do get pulled over and how frightened they are. Uh, think twice about it. Emily was like, get gay, get my um, registration out of the glove compartment. And she was looking for a license. And I don't think if I, you know, if we had been another color, I think we'd have been much more cautious and just, you know, holding hands up and all, all kinds of things. Um, but anyway, all right, let's go on and look at our scripture. Um, and it's, it's a little bit long, but it's John 4, 4 through 30, and then verse 40. Jesus had to go through Samaria. So he came to a Samaritan, Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his sitting by the well, it was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus drank. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Jesus answered her. If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would, he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep in water. Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well, and with his sons drank from it? Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks from this water will be thirsty again. To drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will be a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come back. I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying I have no husband for you have had five ones and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. But you say that the place where the people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, woman, leave me. The hour is coming when you will worship the father, neither on this mountain 
Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. Our is coming and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as the God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will bring all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking. Just then, his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no, what do you do, or why are you, or what do you want, or why are you speaking with her? She left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything was done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way. And then verse 40. So when the, when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed with them for two days. Okay. Long, long scripture there. So Tom Berlin says this, when you go to a whole race of people, you will go out of your way to avoid them, even if it's home to Galilee. Um, so have you ever surprised yourself, others, by engaging with them um, as Jesus engaged with the woman at the well? Someone who, who um, associate with, and as we said before, that people they would often go around Samaria rather than go. Have you ever in, found yourself engaged with someone, um, just as Jesus was engaged with the woman at? I think um, in our lives um, and, and when we're growing up particular, um, Garrett, maybe not you, but, <laughs> and, um, but some of the rest of us um, were taught to stay away from certain people um, or a certain person or a certain race of people um, and just not to associate with them. But then later in life, we find ourselves engaging with them and it, and it surprises us that then then we are taught um and, and well for and for instance um we were at one time my mother was with us and it was not long after 9 11 and she had uh, there were a couple of middle middle eastern men on the plane and she, my mother was just really kind of freaking out over it. And I was like, mama, get on the plane and be quiet. <laughs> and so um, she got to kind of missing them. Once we got in the air, she didn't see them anymore. And so she gets up to go and, and to, to see what she can see. And um, they were kind of slumped down to sleep. And she turned around and did this to me. <laughs> like here they are and I was like oh my gosh mama um so if you know and if and if she were to ever probably in, engage in in conversation with someone from the middle it it probably would just it would surprise me because I think she is like a lot of other afraid afraid of them and think that all are terrorists when they're not um anybody else have a, a situation in which you've engaged with people um, were different or that you normally wouldn't have engaged? What have you been taught or what have you heard taught or preached about the woman at the well that isn't supported by the text? 
by the scripture that we read tonight. What have you been taught about the woman of the well or ever thought about her? Anything? Anything that's different from, from what you read in scripture tonight? Y'all are not very talkative tonight. <laughs> um, do you think that there is, um, back and in, in, in back in biblical times in Jesus's day, um, would uh, it? And what were women thought of? I didn't hear the first part of your question. Okay, uh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, so back in Jesus's day, how were women how or how are women thought of? Inferior. A step Inferior. Below. Inferior. All right, I, Dwight. I didn't hear what you said. Being property. Okay. Why do you think then the disciples surprised? when they came upon Jesus talking with this woman. Not only was she female, but she was a Samaritan, which is two strikes against her. Okay. So how do you think then that Jesus showed this woman um, in that day um, were not respected and Samaritan women probably respected so how do you think jesus showed respect to this woman by speaking to her and he loved her as a human being okay right he didn't judge her he no. didn't judge her right okay So do you think that um, society, that women's status is um, inferior to men? In today's society? I think it just depends on who you ask. No, I don't think so. Okay. How about in other countries? Yes. Yeah, and in other countries, uh, women still are treated like property, yeah. And cases, I guess, in the United States too, women are still treated like like property. Okay. Um, so another thing that Tom Berlin says is that Jesus was not great at small talk. So he walked. He walks up to Bell, and what's the first thing he says to her? Have a drink of water, I think. Yeah, get, give give me a drink. And he doesn't really discuss a lot. Um, th there's not not a whole lot of small talk going right into the important stuff, um, the issues that he talks. Were they? What were the issues he talked about with her? Yeah, husband. No, you say right. You don't have a husband, but you have five. You've had five husbands. Okay. All right. And he also starts talking to her about, um, he said, if you knew the gift of God um, and who this is saying this drink, right. um, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Um, so he gets right into the nitty gritty of uh, her as well. Um, and I think he does that with um, most of the encounters that he had um, in his travels, in his ministry, the three years of his ministry, um, that uh, there was no small talk going on. Um, no, hey, how's the weather? How's the kids doing? That he would just get right into the nitty gritty of things um, with, with people that he encountered. 
Um, I'm sorry. He agitates. He agitates. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. Okay. That's about all that I have um, tonight. Is do any of you have any other comments, or particularly on the, um, I didn't even ask you this, about the chapter itself? Well, this, was there anything that really hit you that really resonated with you? Did y'all read the chapter? Yes. Yes, yes we did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Twice, last okay. weekend, this week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so yeah, I, I would have had to done the same thing, read it again. <laughs> So I enjoyed I enjoyed the story of the trip down to Mexico and the um, I, I did too and the and the um, extra miles that the host families went to to make them comfortable um, they didn't have a lot but they had great meals and I think um, each worker was afforded a, a bed in spite of the fact that that probably meant the host families were sleeping on the floor in another room. Yeah. That was just something that resonated and made yeah. it big. Yeah, I liked that story. I like the stories that he has to tell. Mm -hmm. Anything else, then we're going to go and we'll do chapter five next week. And um, I on Sunday, I guess. Um, so um, let's let's have a prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, we are thankful for the times that we have to be together, believers, as um, the family, as family. We are thankful to be together and study your word. And we ask, dear God, that about our daily lives that you would help us every day to be able to apply your word to our life help us dear god to not walk around of the samaria parts of our cities but um but to walk through them and to learn that are different from us to go out of our way to meet with them and talk with them and engage with them and learn from them we ask, dear God, that you help us to be open to loving all people. Just these things we pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Good night, y'all. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh -huh.